Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to be going over is creating a very basic but quite nice looking flare gun. So we're going to shoot the flare into the sky, it will go up really fast and it will slowly fall down and it will be really bright while it is falling as well. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So the reason why this is basic is because I'm only using the free stuff we already have in engine. So notice that I can shoot it up and it's going to be very bright like that and once it reaches the apex or where it's at the very top it will then start slowly falling down and when it hits the floor it will slowly fade out and, dis and disappear. Now obviously this might not look amazing because what I've done is I've used fire and a very bright red light. Also you notice there we go when it's on the floor it then fades out. Now obviously I am aware flare guns aren't actually just a ball of fire in the sky. The only reason I've done fire is because you might not be able to tell it's fire unless I specifically say so and it kind of gives the same sort of effect of the light in the sky but again obviously you can really advance upon this so we can add smoke as well which i might do later in the video and you can obviously use your own assets which you've bought or maybe got for free that you found somewhere else as well and you can obviously use different sound effects and so much more where you can really customize this and add on to it to make it look a lot better and obviously this would probably look better in a darker setting as well the only reason i'm keeping it this bright is just to show off the rest of it so you can clearly see what i'm doing so again, this is what we're going to be going over and creating today. Very easy to customize and change for what you want. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. And also before I get into the rest of the video, as I said in the past couple of videos, and I don't want to say it too much, but I just want to say we are trying to hit 50,000 subscribers before the end of the year. So if you do like my content and you haven't subscribed already, please do make sure to do that if you do want to continue seeing more. But let's get back on with the video. And what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be using obviously the first person blueprints and first person map and therefore I'm using the first person gun and projectile. So we've already got all that code for shooting set up. Now, if you don't have that, don't worry. You can either open up first person template or you can follow my other video on setting up a gun which shoots. But once we've got the code set up for being able to shoot, we're going to open up our projectile blueprint, which for me is BP first person projectile like so. The first thing I'm gonna do in here is go straight over to the viewport and start messing around with how it looks. So I'm gonna select the sphere and press F to focus on it and you'll notice this already looks a bit different for me. The material might look something like this for you. I just open up the materials and search for red and I'm just gonna get a random one here, which looks red. And I think the one I was using last time was actually something different. I think it was the laser pointer material like so. Is that just again, gives off that kind of fiery effect of the light actually moving and interacting with the sky. Not sure if that makes much sense, but you can see it visually here of why I've chosen it. The next thing I want to add is I want to add in a point light because obviously a flare is meant to light up the surrounding area and a point light will do just that. It will light up full 360 around it. So what I might do as well is also increase the radius of this a little bit like so. You can obviously make this as big as you want. But the only other thing I'm really gonna do is just increase the intensity. So what I'm gonna do is just drag the slider all the way to the right and then go to the beginning and change it from one to three. That's the brightness I'm gonna go with. That's what I was using at the beginning of the tutorial, but you can obviously choose your own one as well. If you wanted, that's just what I'm going with. And then we're obviously gonna change the light color from white to red, like so. And now we have our light set up, and what you can do is you can actually just minimize this and drag this into the level to see what that's gonna look like. So you can see we have it like this. This is how bright it's gonna be in this level, which I think for me is gonna be perfectly fine. I like how that looks. The final thing I want to do visually is I want to obviously add in the flames which again, you don't need to do if you don't want. I just like the extra effect it gives us. So I'm going to add particle system and I'm going to add in just the fire template, which we get in the starter content there. What I'm also going to do is increase this to a size of two instead of one, just because again, I think that looks a little bit better, especially when it's very high up in the sky. So that is all we're going to do visually. Now we need to start actually setting up the code for it. So to do that, we're going to go straight to the event graph here. What we're going to do is first of all, we're going to select our BP first person projectile self. So just the self component of the blueprint. Then we're going to search for life and I'm going to change the initial lifespan from three to zero. Zero meaning it will not despawn naturally. It won't despawn after a set time. We have to actually destroy it as that's what I want because again, I want it to be slow, falling very slowly. I want to control when it despawns. Then we're going to select the projectile movement itself and you can change the initial and max speeds if you want so you can have it higher or lower than the default of 3000 but i think 3000 is fine for me i did mess about with the values and i found that this one worked just fine but what we also want to do is should bounce will probably be ticked for you we want to untick that so it's false so when it lands it lands it does not bounce it just stays there so we'll compile and save that and now start with the actual code 
So we're going to right click and get event tick as we want to be checking this every single frame to see when it actually does start falling. And what I mean by that is falling instead of climbing, so instead of going up. And to determine that, we're going to be using the velocity. So we can right click, get velocity, and we're going to right click return value and split the structure pin as we want to be looking at the Z value because the Z value is obviously going up and down. We want to determine when it stops going up and starts going down as that is obviously when we want to start going slower. So out the Z, we're going to get a less than like so and just have it as less than zero because when it's going up, it'll be a positive number. When it's going down, it will be a negative number. So when it's negative, we're falling. This is going to go into a branch. So we're going to hold down B and left click to get a branch there, connecting that into event tick and the condition being that less than like so. Off of true, we're going to hold down O, left click to get a do once because we obviously only want to do this once, even though it's on event tick. And after we've completed, what we're going to do is get the projectile movement and set projectile gravity scale. So the way we're going to make it fall slower is just lower the gravity scale on it. And for me, I found 0.05 was a good value. You might want it higher, you might want it lower. It just obviously means the lower the value, the slower it will fall. So we're going to compile and save like so. And that is all we need to do to make sure it falls slowly. So that will now work. And it won't look like it's just suddenly started falling slower because obviously the way the bullet is going to work is it's going to go up and slowly slow down until it reaches the apex and then it will start falling. And as it's at this point, it will basically be not moving. So changing the gravity scale will not make it just suddenly go like that. It will go like that nice and smoothly. So I hope that will make sense. And obviously I was following my cursor there as I was explaining that. The next thing I want to do is for when it lands, I want it to fade out. So the light fades out, the fire fades out, all that stuff, and then despawns. Now I've obviously got this happening very quickly after it lands. You might want to make it slower. You might want to make it quicker, or you might not want to do this at all. But if you do want to do it, what we're going to do is come at the Z value of the get velocity once again, and we're going to make vector, connecting in the X into X, Y into Y, and Z into Z. You can obviously just get velocity again, but we've already got it once, so we may as well use that. Out of the return value, we're going to get an equal, equal, equal. So we've got an equal exactly vector, and we're just going to leave that as 0, 0, 0. So when it stops moving, this is going to go into another branch. So hold down B, left click, connecting that one to the false of the first branch, and the condition obviously being that equal, equal, equal. Then this is gonna go into another do once. So again, hold down O, left click. And then out of the do once, we're gonna go into a timeline. So we're going to add timeline like so, and I'm just gonna name this one fade, going straight into play there. Now let's double click this to open it up. The length of this timeline is how long you want to take to fade out. I had it at two seconds, and I'm gonna leave it as that, as I think that worked well for me. Then we're gonna add a track, Add a float track, you can name this what you want, I'm just going to call it fade again. Then inside this track, what we're going to do is right click, add key to curve float with a time of 0 and a value of 0. Right click, add key to curve float with a time of 2 for me as that is the length of my timeline. Then a value of 1. So we're going from 0 to 1 over the length of my timeline. We compile, save that, and that is now our timeline set up like so. So what we want to do now is use this value going from 0 to 1 smoothly to then also smoothly fade out our values. And to do that, we're going to get the fade track here and get a lerp, just a lerp under float like so, making sure that goes into alpha, not A. Because what it's going to do is go from the values of A and B using the alpha, which is the timeline, smoothly going between 0 and 1. I hope that will make sense for you. And what we want to actually be fading out is our particle system and our point light. So we're going to get the particle system here like so, drag out of this, and I'm going to set the relative scale 3D. That's how I'm fading out, I'm just scaling it down. We're going to right click new scale, split the structure pin, and connect the X, Y, and Z into the return value of our lerp there like so. Now we need to set up our values of A and B. So A is going to be the scale it is at the moment, and B is a scale we want it to go to. So A for me is going to be 2, is obviously if I select my particle system, we have a scale of 2, and B is going to be 0 as I want it to go to 0. And then I want to do the point light as well. So we're going to get the point light, drag out of this, set intensity, as we can actually just fade out the intensity, we don't need to scale it down. And the new intensity of this is going to be a new lerp, so not the same one, but a new one, with the alpha once again being our fade track there. Now B is going to be 0 again, but A isn't going to be 2, it's going to be our current intensity of the light. So if we select our light, 
we can see what that is. You see it's this massive number here. Let's just put that in there like so. I believe that's 300,000. And we'll compile and save that. Now obviously if you don't want the light to fade out over two seconds but you do want the particle system to, you can then add in another timeline coming off of finished or coming off of completed as well. So get a sequence so you have two timelines and then you can have different lengths in there so the light will fade out over a longer period than the fire if that's what you wanted. But what we're going to do then is our finished is we want a destroy actor. Now if you are doing two separate timelines what you'd want to do is do a destroy component with the target being the particle system or the light depending on which timeline you're currently on. So if you do want any extra help with all of that message me on discord and I'll be happy to help you out. We're going to compile and save that and that is now the code fully set up and working for us. So we can close this and hit play to test this out. If I just shoot this up in the sky you'll notice we've got a big red ball and a big red light. It's going up and when it reaches the apex of its curve and it's going to be at the peak it's then going to now start slowly falling. You'll notice it's not falling really quickly. It will still gather momentum but it will be at a much lower scale because of the gravity and you'll see it slowly fell like that and when it's on the floor it then faded out like so. Now obviously if that's still falling too fast for you you can just again lower the gravity scale here. You've got to keep in mind that again it will still gather momentum as it's falling down. So if I put it at 0.03 instead of 0.05 you'll notice it looks something like this instead. But I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set up a very basic flare gun system in which we can shoot a flare into the sky and when it reaches the peak it's going to then fall a lot slower down instead of how it was going up and when it reaches the floor it's also going to fade out slowly but again you'll notice it's very very bright. And now as I'm looking at this I would recommend keeping the light around for a lot longer than the particle system but again I have gone over how to do that. But I think that would just make it look a lot nicer. So even if I just shoot it there like so you'll notice it's then landed, it's got no speed, so it's going to just fade out immediately, but I just did that to show you how bright it is with the light here, like so. So thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.